Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a joint meeting of the Montclair and Glenridge Planning Boards. Notice of this building is published in the local papers and also posted in the town halls in our respective communities. Uh, first up, we have roll call. I'm going to go first this time with, uh, for Glenridge. Uh, Dawson is absent. Fields? Here. Hegarty? Here. Mahotra? Is absent. Councilperson Morrow? Here. Robert Morrow? Here. Murphy? Here. Roholz absent. Tirano? Here. Robinson? Here. Chair Mason? Here. You have a quorum, Chair. Okay. Ch uh, Chair Wynn? Here. Vice Chair Brodock? Here. Mr. Schwartz? Here. Mr. Brandon? Uh, Councilor Schlager? Here. Ms. Willis? Here. Mr. Rooney? Here. Mr. Ian Wally is excused. Ms. Lockman? Here. Mr. Barr? He's excused. And Mr. Gilmer? Here. Okay. All right. So we'll get right to our main event. Uh, yeah. We have the continuation of the uh, presentation hearing on One Bay oh, yes. Urban Renewal. Okay. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Glenn Pantel, uh, as you know, the attorney for the applicant, uh, One Bay Urban Renewal, LLC. Uh, we have with us uh, this evening to follow up on the testimony that we presented at the last meeting. Uh, first, our architect, Alan Copelson, will present uh, some, revised, um, re some re revised architectural plans by way of uh, rendered exhibits that have been prepared to provide the additional Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Mr. Brandon just arrived, and uh, Ms. Lockman recused herself. Okay, great. Please proceed. Yep, great. So, uh, as I was saying, we have with us who will be testifying initially our architect, Alan Copelson, presenting some architectural revisions, uh, including uh, this, the building sign above the entrance that the board was interested in seeing, some additional detail on the cornice at the top of the building that some members were interested in seeing, as well as a proposed uh, ca canopy uh, which is being installed by virtue of an eight-foot cantilevered structure above the uh, driveway immediately adjacent to the main entrance to the building. Uh, that testimony will be followed by Corey Chase, our traffic consultant, who will summarize his analysis and findings for the board. Our site engineer, Brad Bowler, who testified previously, as did, of course, Mr. Copelson, will present some brief testimony on some relatively minor site revisions uh, that are made to the plans. And then uh, lastly, we have with us Jennifer Stoughton, uh, who will pre present the de rather detailed sign package uh, that you provided. And in that regard, I do want to note that uh, the intention, and I believe we have succeeded in that respect, is to have the sign package a, com comply with all the requirements of the redevelopment plan, and B, we attempted to provide the detail that was suggested at the last meeting in this uh, 20 or so sheet package of materials provided to you, showing in considerable detail all the different signs and their uh, particular purposes and proposed locations. So if there's no questions uh, for me at this point, what I'd like to do is proceed with Mr. Copelson, who's previously been sworn and qualified. Please proceed. Thank you. State your full name for the record, spell your last name. Yes, Alan Copelson, K-O-P-E-L-S-O-N. You're still under oath. Please proceed. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. And uh, by the way, we're up to exhibit. Our next exhibit will be A-5. Okay. This is a revised one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but the... Um, I don't know if we could do something for adjusting lights. Uh, Can you turn the lights? They're over there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, for the purpose of this meeting, uh, and I won't spend much time on the sign because we have a, the sign person will spend more time on it, but uh, the, the sign is located... Uh, right here above the entrance. Uh, it's very hard to see exactly what it says, but I think in, in yet another graphic that the uh, uh, sign people will present will show it uh, exactly how it reads. Uh, so that was one thing that we had to uh, come back with, and we've done that in terms of 
the sign, where it would go, and it does conform to all the requirements of your current order, or, uh, ordinance. Okay, so what I'd like to do for the record, if we could, is that we'll, we'll call out this package of architectural, revised architectural renderings, renderings as A5, and then refer to each slide as you're testifying. So the first slide that you just referred to is uh, elevation, architectural sheet A6. Right. Okay, and uh, but this is now all part of Exhibit A5, which is the package of revised architectural plans. Okay. The next issue that came up, if you recall, was the entrance where originally we had the portico or covered canopy that came to right about this point uh, where the hand is on the, uh, uh, the rendering. What we've done is we've actually extended it nine feet beyond that point, beyond the curb, um, and because this column is actually one foot in back of the curb so that a vehicle doesn't hit it, or we hope it doesn't hit it. Uh, and it, the four columns will support this new portico, which will come out over the top of an automobile allowing both the passenger and driver to get out uh, in, under a covered area. And then uh, lastly is the top all around the building, the corners of the building. Uh, there was a question as to what it looked like and the dimensions of it and where it goes. So first on this uh, rendering, A6, I point out that it travels all the way around all four sides of the building. and. I'll go to the next image, which is also part of A5. Um, why isn't it coming up? <coughs> well, okay, okay. It, this is A5A, drawing A5A, an exhibit, again, part of A5. So, um, Actually, let me just skip this one for one moment and go to the next one, because the next one has dimensions on it, uh, which was asked of us to actually come up with the dimensions. So the cornice, as I mentioned, is corbelled out. It comes out okay. one so Excuse foot. me, just for the record. So we're now referring oh, we're to... Oh, we're A5, drawing A5B. Okay, which is the third slide in Exhibit A5. Correct. Okay. So... It comes out a foot and a half beyond the face of the building. It's brick, and it's corbelled out, as you see here. Uh, and the dimension on it is two foot four inches in height. Uh, and again, this is the element as you look at it head on. Uh, oh, and here's our sign, by the way. You can see this is a better rendition of this, the sign and what it's going to say. Uh, but again, the detail of it will be spoken to by our sign expert. Um, so this is the front entrance, and if I go back uh, one sheet to A5A, you can see that this is the side of the building, and the cornice, again, follows all the way around the building. Uh, so as I had explained at our last time, the treatment for the front of the building is the same as the back and the two sides of the building. There's no variation in the treatment of materials or the way they're handled in, uh, in terms of the presentation of how they will look to the observer, uh, whether you're on the hospital side or the residential side of the building. Uh, so I hope this clarifies uh, any questions that anyone had as far as what this cornice would look like. Are there any questions? Is it clear? Is it okay now? No, it's much better. I thank you. Okay, the, thank you. For the additional detail. It is okay. a lot clearer. Um, and if I have any other questions about the sign or the front of the portico, um, feel free to ask. Seeing none. None? Glenn, that's me. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Want to, Chair, want to ask for questions from the public on this witness? Yeah. Does anybody from the public have?
have any questions of the architect about the detail that he's provided? Oh, doesn't appear so. Hey, thank you. Hey, uh, our next witness, as I indicated, is uh, Corey Chase, our traffic consultant, who has not yet testified. Do you swear or affirm testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Say your full name for the records by your last name. Corey Chase, last name C H A S E. Uh, could you please describe for the board your professional qualifications and the nature of your involvement in this project? I'm a project manager with Atlantic Traffic and Design Engineers, where I've worked for the past 15 years. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New Jersey and seven other states. I have a bachelor's of science in civil engineering from the University of Massachusetts, and I've been qualified as an expert in traffic engineering before over 100 municipalities. Great. So we would ask that Mr. Chase's testimony be admitted as expert testimony in the field of traffic engineering. We will. Okay, I, was that a yes? That was a yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. Sorry, I, didn't, I could, didn't hear. So could you please proceed to describe for the board uh, the nature of your analysis and your conclusions uh, with respect to the, uh, the traffic issues that you did uh, investigate? Certainly. Uh, as Mr. Pantel mentioned, uh, we did prepare a traffic impact analysis to analyze the traffic impacts associated with the proposed medical office building. It's last revised March 15, 2018. Um, just to recap a little bit, uh, the testimony that Mr. Bowler provided at the last hearing. As part of the redevelopment of the subject property, the two existing unsignalized access points to the former nursing school will be closed, and a signalized access point will be constructed. The existing three-leg unsignalized intersection with Highland Avenue, Bay Avenue, and Walnut Crescent, the proposed access to the medical office building will form the southbound leg into the signalized intersection. In addition, as part of those improvements, we're going to be constructing exclusive left-hand turn lanes on the northbound Highland Avenue approach, the westbound Bay Avenue approach, and the eastbound Walnut Crescent approach. There will also be uh, pedestrian crosswalks and accommodations on all four approaches to the intersection. The existing mid-block signalized pedestrian crossing that currently provides uh, crossing from the former nursing school to the hospital will be eliminated as part of the development proposal and all the pedestrian accommodations will be at the existing signalized intersection. We did prepare a traffic impact analysis to assess the overall impacts of the traffic generated as a result of the proposed medical office building on the adjacent roadway network as well as analyze the impacts on the operational conditions at the intersection of the installation of the traffic signal. Uh, the analysis that we prepared was conservative in that we didn't take any credit for the former nursing school, approximately 68,000 square foot building. We're actually reducing the overall building size as part of the redevelopment, so it's going from approximately 68,000 square feet to 45,735 square feet. Now you could, they are different uses, one being a nursing school, but it did have other offerings in it. It had a daycare center and some other um, amenities that went along with the school. So we would anticipate that it would be a comparable traffic generator to what's proposed so that the net would likely be a wash. However, to be conservative, we didn't take any credit for that traffic generated by the former nursing school. We found that with the traffic generated by the proposed medical office building and with the consideration of the installation of the traffic signal at the existing unsignalized intersection, it's actually gonna improve the operational traffic conditions at that intersection. Currently, the northbound Walnut Crescent approach to the intersection operates at a failing level of service during peak times. That's going to improve to level of service B with consideration of the signalized operation and the addition of traffic generated by the proposed medical office. The adjacent unsignalized intersections, Walnut Crescent and Claremont, Walnut Crescent and Walnut Street to the north, are calculated to operate at level of service C or better during each of the peak hours. So those are considered to be acceptable levels of service, even with the consideration of the traffic generated by the proposed medical office building, and no credit taken for the former use and occupancy of the site. The site will meet the township parking requirements, inclusive of the 42 valet stalls that were testified to last time as far as operational conditions go. 
Uh, we did review the on-site circulation with Mr. Bowler's office and found that acceptable circulation will be provided throughout for both delivery vehicles as well as passenger cars circulating the site. Um, I didn't have any other additional testimony, Glenn, if you felt like I missed anything or I'd be happy to answer any questions by the board or the board's professionals regarding the, the traffic study circulation, the signalized intersection. What, what's the definition of a C? Uh, you, you mentioned that, that Walnut Crescent is categorized as a C section. What, what, what is the definition of that? It's, it's based on uh, seconds of delay. So they categorize levels of service based on levels of delay. Typically, they operate in letter grades, A being the least amount of delay and a level of service, F being the most excessive amount of delay. Uh, what F means is that the, the capacity at the intersection is actually exceeded by the volume at the intersection. So typically, in these conditions, a level of service, E, in some cases, is considered acceptable. In all cases, a level of service, D, or better, is considered acceptable. So these are intersections are actually operating at, at better than that. So they're operating with... Uh, no real perceptible delay to the average driver. Thank you. What's the current um, level of operation for the non-signalized intersections? They are currently level of service C, and they're going to maintain at level of service C better. So there's no degradations as a result of this development. Yes. It is. It, is, that, is that road wide enough for three lanes? It is. There's uh, no road widening proposed given the existing cartway width. We do have sufficient width to stripe in the, the northbound left turn lane as well as a shared through right turn lane and then there will be one lane going southbound. There is, and I should have mentioned this in my direct, there is minor road widening proposed along the site frontage to accommodate that um, westbound left turn lane along the site frontage along Bay Avenue, but that's the only actual physical road widening that we're going to be doing. South. Um, Southbound on Walnut Crescent, there's another only left turn lane. So yes. That's going to go into the parking lot? Correct. Is, is Bay Avenue a county road? Bay Avenue. Bay Avenue is a county road from our discussions with the county up to the municipal line. At the municipal line, the county's ownership of that road ends, so the intersection is actually not under county jurisdiction. So you say up to, so which side is, uh, to be clear, what side of Bay Avenue is county, what side is not? My apologies. Uh, the, the east side of the corporate line so from the, our property heading in an eastbound direction, easterly direction, is under county jurisdiction as you approach heading west. Once you go beyond the corporate line, west towards the intersection, it becomes municipal jurisdiction. Just to point out, um, I've had conversations with uh, uh, Montclair Township's uh, Department of Community Services, and in their opinion, the control of the the light is really, it should be a county light because it's controlling traffic along Bay Avenue, a county, mm. a county road. So they would like the county to take jurisdiction of that signal. So uh, have you also received the uh, April 22 report from uh, NV5, specifically Mr. Fishinger, the uh, traffic consultant who reviewed this on behalf of the Montclair Planning Board? I did. Yeah, could you comment on uh, his comments. Yeah, certainly, um, and we can agree to all of the comments contained in the traffic and circulation comment section of Mr. Mr. Fishinger's letter. Um, the first comment is sort of just touching on what we were just discussing as to who has jurisdiction over the signalized intersection. Um, we will agree to provide an initial crossing along the uh, Walnut Crescent approach to Claremont Avenue to add that additional crossing in a north-south direction. Um, 
He also commented about truck traffic. Now, we don't expect any tractor trailer deliveries associated with the proposed medical office building. Uh, the deliveries would primarily be single unit trucks, uh, UPS and FedEx vehicles, vehicles of that nature. So no large tractor trailer deliveries are anticipated with the facility. Uh, it is noted that trucks are restricted along Claremont Avenue. So, you know, any deliveries to the facility would have to abide by the existing truck restrictions along the adjacent roadway network. And he also asked that we consider doing an all-way stop control at the Walnut Crescent, Walnut Street, Roswell Terrace intersection. And that's something that we can agree to do. The, the Federal Highway Administration publishes uh, what they call warrants to evaluate whether all-way stop control would be required. Uh, and we will evaluate those existing traffic volumes and the proposed to see if they meet those thresholds to uh, require all-way stop control and submit that for his review. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, one more. Hi. Do you think it's important to add a crosswalk along Bay Avenue further down to get to the medical office building? In my professional opinion, we like to concentrate the crossings at actual intersections. Um, we typically discourage mid-block crossing because they're unexpected and they violate driver expectancy. Uh, it's, it's a much safer crossing maneuver to do it at the signalized intersection. So in my professional opinion, I would discourage adding an additional crossing midway down Bay Avenue. I agree with what you're saying, but I don't think that the average person is going to walk all the way down up to that uh, section where you have all the crosswalks. So do you think it's better to encourage a crosswalk there than not have a crosswalk and just people walking across that street? Yeah, um, actually, maybe I can help with that. At the last meeting, there was a suggestion about putting some fencing up along the, the boundary of the medical office building fronting on Bay Avenue uh, to, dis to make that movement that you just alluded to Im impossible. And uh, unless somebody's going to engage in, in fence jumping, it doesn't seem too likely. So we are prepared uh, to in install such fencing along that boundary to discourage if not totally eliminate that movement. Again, I agree with you, but there are homes a little bit further down. There's, a, it was brought up, I think, by, I think it was a resident who said, there's a park across the street, just a little further down on the same side of where the hospital is, and there are people who will, will want to cross the street down there. So I think it's a, I'm strongly suggesting a crosswalk somewhere further down. When you say further down, you mean further to the east of the uh, medical office, proposed medical office building? Somewhere in that area where it can, it can serve the purpose. I mean, you may not cross through if you're going to put a fence on that line. Right. But people are going to want to cross the street. Whether they cut through or not cut through, I just think it's too long of a stretch from where you have the crosswalks in place now to where the end of Bay Avenue meets at the, uh, I think there's another light or a stop sign there at the end of the corner of Ridgewood Avenue in Bay. Is it, oh, Sherman also comes it's, along. It's, it's Sherman. Uh, right, Sherman. yes, Sherman. 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 You know, what we can do on that, rather than tr try to totally solve it this second, if uh, the board is to inclined to approve and make a condition to the effect that we would consider that in consultation with the traffic consultant, uh, you know, for the board, we're prepared uh, to do that. It's not as if we're, you know, unequivocally opposed to it, but you, you heard the concern that we have, but uh, we'd be prepared to address that uh, with your traffic consultant if the board were so inclined to approve and make that a condition. Thanks. That would also require county approval because Bay Avenue in that area is under Essex County jurisdiction, so they would have to weigh in on that topic as well. So what happens if we don't do that, but you see that the behaviors are such that people are doing it? Could you adjust the flight? A crosswalk is certainly something that could be added at a later date. It doesn't have to be constructed at the inception. I, I think that if I hear the concerns correctly, that it's not necessarily people going to and from the hospital and the medical office building, but existing pedestrian circulation maneuvers in the area. So certainly it's something that, that could be watched. And if, it, if it's flagged as a problem in the future, you know, that crosswalk could certainly be added at a later date. of approval that the um, Glenbridge HPC gets a sign off on the actual uh, fence detail? 
Yes, we can do that. I, oh, I'm sorry, I have one more question. Um, with moving the light to that section, you said right now the intersection um, further down Walnut is <coughs> level C and it's gonna remain a level C. Don't you think that needs a little bit more improvement? I mean, there's a ton of backup over there coming off of Claremont, um, coming down to Walnut and turning onto Bay. Right now, that existing light only functions to accommodate the pedestrian crossing. So I've sat through that light several times, and what happens is someone will actually push the push button on either side of the crosswalk. The light turns red and actually stays red for a fairly substantial amount of time to accommodate that crossing much longer than you would actually need at an existing signalized intersection. But it's unique in that the light is really only there to accommodate pedestrians. So I think that when they designed it, they wanted to give ample amount of time to get people across. So that light stays red for a substantial amount of time. And that is really what causes those backups that you see on Walnut Crescent that spill over into Claremont is people are sitting here for an extended amount of time. Um, based on the level of service analysis that we prepared, you're going to see this intersection operate at level of service B or better, which is more than acceptable. And again, the, the movements from northbound Highland onto Bay and onto Walnut Crescent are actually going to improve substantially. This is a, a level of service F under the existing conditions, and it's going to improve to a level of service B. So these people coming northbound on Highland, they're going to see a substantial improvement in the overall circulation on the adjacent roadway network by not having to deal with the backup and traffic along uh, Walnut Crescent and Bay. But what about, I, and that's great, but what about um, the folks who get stopped? There's a stop sign currently where the crosswalk is, there you go. Because those folks wait a long time as well. And I'm not sure if that's because of the timing of the light and if that's going to improve, then everything's going to improve. But you're saying that that is a C and it's going to remain a C. That's correct. And actually, you, you brought up a good point that I should have mentioned. And that the, the light itself is going to create gaps in traffic for those people that aren't there now. Right now, the only gaps are created when somebody pushes the push button to utilize a crossing. It's gonna operate as a standard traffic signal, so it's gonna go green, yellow, red on a timed sequence. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create gaps in traffic for those people that are coming southbound to Walnut Crescent that aren't there currently. So it, while we didn't see any improvement in the calculations, we didn't see any degradations either. In reality, it's likely gonna improve over what it is currently. Well, what I wanted to say before was when we talk about warrants, sometimes the warrants might not be there. So what happens if we don't get the four-way stop sign intersection? Our analysis didn't include that evaluation. So our analysis assumed no four-way stop in place. So the results that are in the traffic study wouldn't change. Um, if we do determine that it is warranted, we would, as part of that warrant analysis, just conduct an updated level of service to see what the differential is with and without the four-way stop, and then you guys can make an educated decision as to whether or not you want to implement it or not. Right. I'm not arguing for or against. I just want the board to be aware that that's one of those things that may not happen. That's all. Question here? Yes. I have a question. Uh, the report has a section on future traffic conditions and other area developments. And there's a projected 1% background growth, I guess, that's built into your analysis. And my question uh, is whether or not this 1% growth pattern is consistent with a proposed development on Baldwin Street of a 98-unit uh, residential complex. Would that 1% be su sufficient to, to accommodate that? Yeah, we, those developments such as that would be accommodated by the background growth. It's not going to substantially alter the, the traffic patterns in the neighborhood uh, with the development of that size and given its location. So that 1% that is sufficient. And I mentioned as well, we didn't take any credit for you know, the existing uh, nursing school. So there is a factor of safety built into our analysis. We just added all on, on all of our traffic onto the existing conditions to evaluate a worst case scenario. Questions from the, either board? Yeah. Just um, if you could just go back to the intersection of Walnut Crescent and Claremont and just 
walk us through the movements there and the lanes. Well, not Crescent and Claremont? Yeah. We're not proposing any changes to this intersection. Okay, but didn't you just say there would be a left turn? There is going to be, as you go, I'm going to say east, uh, west to east along Walnut Crescent as you approach Bay Avenue. We're installing a left turn lane along the subject property oh, frontage. No, okay, okay. Understood. I, I thought it was. Okay, yeah. that makes more sense. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, one question. So uh, here we're talking about traffic and overall circulation as well, pedestrian circulation, correct? Correct. In terms of access points, if folks are at this medical office building, are there any paths or ways for folks to access the road outside of the complex here? Or would all the traffic in and out need to come through the four-way traffic signal, even foot traffic, let's say? The intent is to direct all vehicular and pedestrian traffic in and out of this access point to, to concentrate those movements in a single location. Um, you're going to direct all the people to the signalized pedestrian crossings at the signal. So if they want to go back and forth between the hospital and the medical office building, they're all concentrated in one area that rather than having multiple entrance and exit points uh, onto the adjacent network. And it may be tricky to determine now, but are there large spaces in the building that would lead to there either being events or small conferences where we would expect an increase in the flow of individuals coming in and out of the building or, or no? Is that just not? That's not the intention at this time. It's going to be a medical office building. Great. Will pedestrians have control of the light at any point? There will be pedestrian push buttons as part of the um, intersection design, yes. Could that cause the same problem you alluded to before? That if the would that be an extended primary? What it does is the crossings function with the existing light, so you'll be allowed to cross when certain movements are going. So there won't be a phase, we call it an all red phase, where the entire intersection goes red and just pedestrians cross, that won't occur. They'll actually occur with the existing traffic movements as they go. Any other questions from the board? Are there questions from the public concerning this witness's testimony? Uh, Carmel Lockman. Uh, I live at 26 Walnut Street, which is diagonal from the um, upper left-hand corner of the proposed medical office building. Yeah, right there. So you had mentioned that um, you were going to do an analysis of that intersection of Walnut Street and Walnut uh, 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 Crescent, I guess it is. Um, and it struck me that what you're saying is that if there's any change in the volume of traffic, that that may warrant a four-way stop sign. Did I hear you correctly? We were asked to, we, we evaluated in its current configuration. We were asked by the township traffic consultant to consider if this intersection meets the volume warrants to install a four-way stop, which we're agreeing to do. The volume warrants, you mean the number of cars going through that intersection? Correct. Okay, so that's really not the problem. The problem is that, and I don't know why this is, but people do not stop at the stop sign that's on the, the left-hand side. Yeah, that stop sign. They consistently blow through that stop sign, so it's dangerous. And I've seen many times people beeping their horns, almost hitting people that have the right of way coming down Walnut Crescent which is, in my view, I would advocate for a stop sign on Walnut Crescent and let them go through because that's the natural thing that they do is blow through the stop sign at Walnut Street. So what I was hoping for is that you'd be looking at um, doing a four-way stop sign, at least then, you know, hopefully the Walnut Crescent people will stop and maybe the Walnut Street people will too at times. But believe me, that north, whatever it is, that corner up there, they do not stop at that stop sign. All right, so I was asking, the nature of the question was, are they just looking at volume or are they looking at safety issues? Because that's a real safety issue. The, the warrants are volume-based, and it sounds like it's an enforcement issue that could be dealt with accordingly if we've determined that the volume warrants aren't meant 
to install the four-way stop. I really don't think the volumes are going to change that much, or maybe you think that they are. <laughs> Do you think that the volumes are going to change that much? You'll be able to comment later when you get to the comment part. Right. Okay. Well, I'm just pointing to get out that the problem is that that's a safety issue, not a volume issue. And I, I mean, I've told the town about it, and nothing has gotten done. But since we're doing this redevelopment now, it strikes me it's another time to bring this up. Okay, another question is you said, I thought you said, that nothing was being done on the uh, intersection of Claremont and Walnut Crescent. But I thought that you were going to stripe a crosswalk going from the um, west side of Walnut Crescent over to right there. There's no striped crosswalk there at the moment. It's a natural path for people to walk. And I, would, I thought that part of the plan was that you would stripe a crosswalk. We are, and I apologize for not being clear. I was referring to installing a left turn lane. I think there was a little bit of confusion as to where this left turn lane on Walnut Crescent was going to be located. But we are, in fact, proposing to provide a pedestrian crossing on that approach to the intersection. OK. All right, so new topic. My next question is, how long is the construction of the medical office building going to take? Maybe that's not your question, but. Yeah, that's not my ex level of expertise, sorry. OK. So while it's being constructed, there's lots of big trucks that are going in and out um, into the, the area that's now the old nursing school. Um, are you aware what the nature of those streets are on the master plan that Montclair has? What kind of streets they are? I am, and I would expect that truck traffic into and out of the facility, even during construction, would be Bay Avenue to Ridgewood to Bloomfield. That seems like the the most desirable path to get larger vehicles into and out of the site. But my question was, are you aware of what our master plan calls those streets? As far as classification goes? Yes. I'm not. You're not. Okay, so um, Claremont Avenue and Walnut Street are what they call town thoroughfares, which indicates a higher level of traffic is allowed on those streets. However, Walnut Crescent is a neighborhood thoroughfare, yet... What I've seen even thus far, living on that corner for 13 years, is that trucks routinely go on Walnut Crescent all the way through Oxford Street. So they routinely go through a um, residential area. And I would like to see something that would prevent them, especially during this construction Excuse time. Excuse me, is this, a, is this a question? You know. Can I, let, me, let me jump in. I have a suggestion, Mr. Chairman. The, I think one of the conditions we should have is we should have a developer's agreement. And as part of the developer agreement, we should be discussing, these, these are very good questions about how the traffic and staging are going to occur, and it should be done in consultation with professional staff. Unless anyone disagrees, huh? No, I think that's a good idea, because it's not just, uh, it's not just a developer obligation, I don't think. I think there is a, there's a, a level of enforcement of traffic controls that is beyond the developer's control, that, that really is beyond the scope of what these boards um, here do also. I agree, but I want to point it out, John, that living in the neighborhood, you see things, and from a practical point of view, you're not going to have a policeman standing there in the corner giving tickets. That's, that's why we do a developer's agreement, though. Then, the, then the, city, the city will take responsibility for that. It's beyond the jurisdiction and the kin of the board. And maybe, <coughs> and, and maybe there needs to be an enforcement blitz at that corner to discourage yeah. long term. I mean, but but with respect to the developer making making changes, I see their options as, as somewhat limited, and that's really what we're talking about here. Okay. You know, right. So those. So while your comments are are, are well taken, um, there's only but so much that we can do here about it, as you know. No. And that, that really they need to be focused uh, also at the town. Um, and also at the, you know, the, the uh, people who deal with the traffic control the police department um, to, to alert them to the safety issue they, that you are first at. Right. Yeah, they're going to tell them which streets to come in, when they can come, what the time right. is. It yeah. won't solve everything, but it'll at least control right. them. But that's, that's all that they can do. I, you right. know, I think uh, I'm 99% I'm sure that the reason why they're 
trucks are going that route is because they're trying to avoid the congestion at Grove Street and Walnut Street and get around, get around the traffic right, to get around, circles the traffic around there light. so that they can go out Grove Street to hit the highway. Plus the natural <laughs> you know. flow of the trucks is to go up Claremont Avenue, yet they make them go through Walnut Street and there's an island there and they can't turn. So it's from a practical point of view, it's the most you know, ridiculous layout. Right. And now I, we're I, looking, my point is we're looking at this, we're looking at a traffic person, we have our own guy. Somebody needs to do something about this. So I just wanted to point it out. Maybe okay. it's not a question. Yeah, and, and by the way, what I'd like to add is uh, responding to the comment regarding a uh, so-called developer's agreement. Actually, this project will have a redevelopment agreement. And the sort of issue that was just raised can re readily be addressed uh, in a redevelopment agreement. Awesome. Then we just add that provision. For the start, why don't we just make it a condition that during the period of construction, at least, that there is a no trucks sign placed in appropriate places? But that's part of the problem. There's a no truck sign that doesn't let them go up Claremont Avenue. So all the trucks go to Walnut Street well, I'm where suggesting they can't turn. I'm suggesting adding another one on the, other, on the local streets. What should happen is they should take down the sign for Claremont yeah. Avenue and let the trucks go up that way. But, it, but get it, the developer can't... Address. It's a town issue, but yes. we're town people. It's a town issue. And that's a council decision, too. Yeah. Yep. So okay. maybe that's something that we can bring to the council's attention on behalf of the board. And we can address that at our next, okay. uh, our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, going back to, just to clarify, um, when you said that you were going to, uh, going to evaluate the intersection of uh, Walnut, Walnut Crescent, Roswell, are you going to evaluate that, taking into account the increased traffic from the fully developed project? That's correct. Okay. Are there any more questions from the public of uh, this witness? Yes, sir. Please come up. Good evening. Joe Fishinger with NV5, the board's traffic consultant. Corey, to start, were you, did you prepare a traffic study for the parking lot for the hospital, and are you going to provide any testimony with that regard? We did prepare a separate narrative uh, for the addition of the hospital parking, and the, the conclusions were that really that parking is going to accommodate the existing demand that's currently circulating the adjacent roadway network and relocate that to the proposed parking, so there's not going to be any perceptible changes in traffic as a result of that parking area. And as part of that, did you review the operation of the gate into the that parking area? I believe the requirement was for, uh, 40 feet of storage capacity, and you provide 40 on the nose. Do you believe that's adequate to accommodate the proposed operation? We do believe that's adequate, yes. And then I assume you've had a chance to take a look at through the rest of my comment letters. I'm not going to go through each item individually, but is there, I guess we'll do it this way, is there any items that you will not comply with or agree to? Uh, not in regards to the items that I'm testifying to. I know that there's going to be some further discussion on signage uh, forthcoming, but everything traffic related uh, in regards to either the, the traffic signal design, the, the warrant analysis, we can agree to all of those items. And with regard to the traffic, I apologize if you said this, uh, would you agree to design the signal to Essex County standards even though the jurisdiction is still up for a discussion, I guess, is the right word at this point? Certainly. All right. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Pantel, let's just mark the traffic report as uh, A6, and then the memo uh, from MV5, uh, dated uh, March 21st, 2018, as B7. Okay, so we'll mark as A6. That's the March 15th. March 15th traffic report. That's A7. Okay, and A7 will be the NV5 April 22nd report. Okay. Okay, and it should also, I think, be noted for the record that in the course of his testimony, Mr. Chase referred 
on occasion to the site layout exhibit, which is going to be part of Exhibit A8, which is the revised uh, engineering uh, exhibits. It'll be slide three of that set of exhibits that Mr. Bowler will be addressing in a little more detail. It's a new one. Okay. Oh, so I'm sorry. The uh, NV5 report is B B7. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. We have one more question. I just had a, a question on the when we mentioned the uh, Essex County standards for the light fixtures and things. Is is there any dis discussion of the you know the treatment of the light of the traffic signals or are they you know the, the standard stainless steel? Do they are they contextual in the, the the treatment or how the aesthetic of it? They're typically stainless steel. I, I mean, I have seen powder coated signals, um, but that also becomes a maintenance issue, maintaining the powder coating and and keeping them up. So, uh, typically, you know, ninety five percent of the signals we install are just stainless steel. It, it just may be something that the boards want to consider in terms of the overall look of the area. Um, it makes a big difference from intersection to intersection when, with the type of materials used. So, just put that out there. Any other questions? Are you suggesting something? Yeah, I prefer the, the painted coated steel look. It has a more historical kind of look on the Glen Ridge side. It goes a little bit more on that gas lamp kind Agreed. of look. So, I would just recommend that that be explored. Put it in as a, suggesting it as a condition? If it's in the purview of the, the planning board, I'm not sure. quite sure how that. Mm -hmm. Should we send, send it? That, Mr. I would, my only comment would be that ultimately the county or the municipality are going to have to maintain the signal after it's constructed. So in the event that there's ever a knockdown or things like that, it, when they're powder coated, it becomes more of an issue because you, you obviously you don't want three powder coated traffic signal mast arms and one stainless steel one up there, um, but those are the ones that are readily available in the event of emergency. So just, just something for the board to consider. And we can go either way with it. If the board wants to require that it, it be powder coated, if, you know, in consultation with your engineer, you know, we're, we're fine with that. Well, I, I Glenn, believe the county does do powder coated. Uh, it's on Bloomfield uh, Avenue right at the intersection of Ridgewood right. Avenue. And, yeah. and, and Glen Ridge has a particular look with its gas lamps, so we sense. should continue to try and maintain that feel throughout the uh, campus area. Yeah. I got it. Good idea. Good. Other questions? All right, Council. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, our next witness is Brad Bowler, our site engineer, who testified, of course, at the last hearing and remains under oath. And he'll be presenting some uh, relatively minor revisions, but revisions that we want to bring to the board's attention regarding overall site layout, in connection with which he'll be <coughs> referring, as I indicated a moment ago, to what we will call as Exhibit A8, which is a package of four slides pre prepared by his office. Uh, which depict uh, those revisions. I think we missed uh, seven. Think we're it's A7. Seven. Oh, because we had B, right. Okay, so we're up to now A7 instead of A8. So let's note that for the record. Okay. So. Full name for the record, it's quite a lot. Sure. Bradford Bowler, B O H L E R. Thank you. You're still under oath. So, so as you refer to these different uh, plans, please identify each one as slide number one, et cetera, as part of Exhibit A7. Okay, so um, I'll refer to the exhibit. This will be slide two, which should be the um, third sheet in the, the packet. Let me just make sure. Uh, no, 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 no. Slide. Yes, it's the third sheet in the packet. It yes. has, has the uh, medical office building shown on it. Um, so that's the plan exhibit entitled Site Layout Exhibit. It's the third slide in Exhibit A7. Yes. So, so 
this, this exhibit shows, um, at the last hearing, we had discussed putting a fence along the parking spaces to the Bay Avenue side of the property, which is the south side of the property. So we proposed that. Uh, in addition, we also showed an upper left-hand corner, a cross-section of what that would look like uh, schematically um, so that the board can picture that. So on the left side of that uh, view would be Bay Avenue. There's the street trees and the sidewalk going from left to right. The shrubs, the evergreen shrubs that are uh, between the sidewalk and the parking lot and then the, the fence that would be at that location. There is some space between the fence and the curb line for some snow storage so we don't knock the fence down. And then our parking spaces, uh, which is the convertible on the right side of the on the right side of the exhibit. So that's the, the only change for this plan from the previous uh, hearing. So then the fourth slide in the packet, uh, which shows the uh, parking deck area. Can I just ask if there's a, a picture or anything of the fence, what it looks like? Uh, we propose a post and rail fence, but we're open for uh, the board's suggestions. And also I understand that the, um, the comment was about the Historic Preservation Committee reviewing that as well. So again, we're open for suggestions uh, on those fences. We don't have a preference either way. So it would be reviewed by the yes. HPC? Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Tom? Sorry, Mrs. Uh, the, uh, the location of the fence, the, the limits of the fence, starting where, ending where? The location of the fence would run from east to west along the parking spaces along Bay Avenue, so the entire length of that parking space run. So is it going to start at the driveway? Uh, it would start, there's the pocket park to the west of uh, the parking spaces. Okay. At that, there's a uh, parking space it faces, I guess it would be towards the intersection, and then it would run to the east all the way down uh, Bay Avenue and end of the, the perpendicular parking spaces at the end. It's not depicted on the plan, though, is it? The location? So, technically, it's, it's on this exhibit, but you can't see it because it's a single mm -hmm. line, so which is why we put together the. Uh, we, which is why we put together the cross section so that we could visually represent that, what that looked like. Uh, it, it'll run through the, the corporate limits, so it'll, it'll, again, it'll be along those parking spaces um, fronting Bay Avenue. So it'll bend around, it's not yeah. going to cut off the park? That's correct. It'll bend around the parking spaces and follow the parking curb line. Okay. And really what it is, it's to encourage the pedestrians to follow the crosswalks and sidewalks. That's correct. how high the fence is? Did I miss that? The height of the fence? Oh, we would propose uh, three and a half feet. I think it says four, doesn't it? On your plans? It says four on the plan. I'm sorry, four, yes. Sorry. Is it possible to give a description of the height of the fence? Uh, so I would propose it to be two feet two to two and a half feet off of the parking spaces within the medical office building. <coughs> Not my place to have a concern, but if you're going to use a post and rail fence to stop people from crossing the street, that's the fence that's most, that's least likely to stop me. What do you think? I've never seen you climb, <laughs> um, I guess I understand that, but typically a four or five fence, you know, it's you know, three rails in it. You shouldn't have to sneak through. If you really want to try to go through there, that's fine. Um, but there also is a grade change that happens between the medical office building. I mentioned that last, last hearing that we're higher, so there'd be a grade change and landscaping between that. So the combination of all three of those hopefully would prevent you from jumping that fence. Okay. If the board's okay with it, I'm just pointing it out. 
Well, I think also the commission, the Historic Preservation Commission is going to take a look at it. And then also along that pocket park, what's your thoughts about running some along that pocket, pocket park as well, just to prevent somebody from leaving, leaving the emergency room at entrance, trying to run across the street and enjoy that park first? Do you mean on the street side of the park? Yeah. We can certainly look at that. I don't think that um, the distance to the crosswalk is that extreme where someone would do that. Okay. Is there a fence on the east side of this property? Uh, there is a board on board or stockade fence that runs along the entire east side of the property between the homes and the, and the, um, the medical office building proposed. Okay, and how high is that? Uh, that is currently six feet high, and we're proposing six feet high. Okay, thanks. So going back to slide four, um, it's the parking deck uh, view. Uh, it would be site layout plan B of our our, our uh, rendering. Um, showing this plan uh, based on the last hearing uh, with a neighbor uh, about the, the public park in that area. So um, what we looked at in this area was we provided additional evergreen trees. So now instead of a single row of evergreen trees at six to seven feet high, we proposed a double row staggered so that it fills in <coughs> at that location. We've also designated the area for the redevelopment zone square footage wise <coughs> so that it meets the criteria. But we revised the park to eliminate the benches and the seating areas in that location. And we provided a, a walkway path with some landscaping along that side of it as another option for the board to consider. Um, and we hope that addresses the public comments we had the last hearing. Okay, so, okay, that's actually slide four because yes. here's the second. Okay, so that slide four is called out as the site layout plan B. Okay. Any other changes on that? Uh, no. The slide other than the one intended to accommodate the question concern was, raised by the neighbor at the last meeting? That was the end of the changes we had made to these exhibits. In, in that um, the, the newly designed grass area, would you consider a path shooting the diagonal connecting where your current walkway and take that to the crosswalk? So do you mean going from north to south or from that way? The, uh, east to west? East to west. To bring you, you know, because people are naturally going to come out of that parking lot, cut across the grass towards that crosswalk. Sure, we can do that. The goal was to and our thought process was to keep that path generally in the area of the designated area for the redevelopment zone, but that's not a problem to move that if that's the, the, the board's wish. So is that all you have to present uh, on the slides? Uh, that's correct. There, there was... Um, the sign vendor will come up and talk about the signs, but there were a number of comments from NV5 that were uh, related to site work uh, and site layout. So from a high level perspective, I just want to make sure I noted that we will work with the sign vendor to revise our plans, landscaping, locations, et cetera, to reflect those locations that she proposed on her plans, that they're, they're coordinated as part of um, a final set of plans. Okay. Are there um, any questions from the boards concerning uh, Further concerning changes made to the site? Uh, not, not a question, but uh, a, another um, request to put into the um, conditions for uh, potential approval, if, if uh, voted on by the board, that uh, the applicant uh, be required to submit a final and comprehensive set of site plans that include all changes agreed to uh, in the process of the hearings and that that be submitted along as an exhibit with the redevelopment plan uh, prior to the um, um, uh, delivery of a, a building permit. Yes, that is, that's, of course, that's acceptable. 
Are there questions from the public? Well, I, I'm sorry. I have a quick question. I don't know who would answer this, but I'd like to ask a general question on trash receptacles. Where will they be? Is there a plan for trash receptacles? I don't know who does that, the architects. The yes, okay. we'll, we'll answer that. Give it, just give us a second. OK. Well, there's going to be a pocket park. Are they going to have a trash receptacle in the pocket park? I don't know. But people come out of their car. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think a trash would be this difficult. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you mean trash receptacles, you mean like the ones that aren't um, pedestrian oriented, where you can throw garbage in, correct? Well, you have a pocket park. Yeah. So sometimes folks were. Um, okay. So there are a few in the in the parking deck area. There's four. Um, two at the entrance and exit for pedestrians. So the, the actual garage. And then there's two at the intersections right now. Perfect. There. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Watkinson? Yeah, uh, back to the fencing on the uh, medical arts site. Um, I know there was some discussion about uh, additional screening and Fencing along the um, on the easterly side of the parking lot. Uh, I think that's uh, not where the not where the real wide buffer is, but where the narrow buffer is. And you're pro proposing a six foot stockade fence. Yes. And how close does that come to the right of way line of Bay Avenue? We propose it to uh, within 10 feet of the, of the right-of-way line, and we can extend it further if, if it uh, does not require a variance. Okay, so it will uh, end at about where the uh, the lance, where the uh, where the uh, perpendicular uh, in the corner. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So it will not go out to the right-of-way line and inhibit the visibility of the driveway from that lot. That's correct. That's it, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yes, I, I guess I have one question. With respect to the, well, I'm not sure what uh, slide it is, but uh, I know there was a question raised at the last session from a, a resident who lived right on the border, um, on, on Bay, but right on the, the border. And the question was whether or not those six slots, those six parking spots that are designated guess, adjacent to his property could, could be moved to a spot that inherently has more buffer to it. And, and I don't know if now is the proper time to raise that, but I, I know we discussed it and that was a comment from uh, the resident. So. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so we did look at that. The um, in order for to move those parking spaces out of that out of this area, it would create a deficit of parking with regards to the code for the medical office building. So we would not be parked compliant with the code. You, you couldn't move it to another section of the say that that other quadrant um, with the valet parking. He, with he the was valet parking he was talking about taking off one on the east west row above and one below and sliding the six spots mm -hmm. over. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not so removing those two parking spaces would still create a variance for our for application. So I guess the answer is proposing a six foot. Can you do anything? Yeah. Can you do anything with we the also are, excuse me. Yeah, I just want to make it clear. There also is a six-foot-high stockade fence proposed uh, between those parking spaces and the neighbor's property. Right. Uh, yeah, I, there is one there now. I...
When, when you say it creates a parking deficit, is that taking into account all the parking in the valet? Yes. Yeah, it does take that into account. Area, because you could. But there is one thing. So the, the, the one option that we can look at, instead of moving the spaces, is making them employee spaces so that the turnover is minimized um, with regards to in and out for those parking spaces, if that's the board's wish. Yeah, and we can sign those as employee only. Yes, those are uh, proposed evergreen trees, six to seven feet high. There's a mix of uh, species in that location. Uh, we typically try to do um, faster growing trees, so in the range of two to three feet a year. Is there somewhere on the plan that falls out the six to seven feet that would be required to be installed in the uh, it, it will on the revised site plan when they're submitted. That's our standard minimum. Uh, tree height when, we, when planting, so that would be part of the uh, revised plans when for, for and what's the space? Six feet on center. Okay, so six feet, six and seven feet tall, every six feet. Tall. And we stagger the rows so that uh, the evergreen trees are triangles, so we make sure we kind of fill that space in with additional trees. Other questions? Board. From the public. Good evening. Um, my name is Janelle Santos, AKA the neighbor. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank you for um, removing the benches. I appreciate that. Another question that I have is um, will that area be fenced or there's no fencing? It's just the two rows of trees. Um. I believe you have a fence currently. But I do have yeah. a fence, yes I do. Um, but we did propose to provide a six foot high fence at that location. So it's a, a stockade, solid fence. Okay, that sounds good. Um, the side where it's on George Street, where the parking lot is, where you enter, I guess you enter on, what is that street again? Um, can't think of it. Sherwood, yes. And then you come down and there's George. You know those two houses mm -hmm. there, I know they're gonna be demoed. That side of George, will there be a fence there or is that just going to be open? So it's, it's slide three in our set, and I apologize, it's probably the first sheet in the, the packet. Just so I'm clear, do you mean the western boundary of the parking lot? There'll be a six foot high fence at that location as well. But okay. there, it will not extend along the street right of way. It won't. That, no. That'll just be open with the trees and everything? Yeah, to allow for visibility of pedestrians. And I know that cars only can go one direction here, but to allow for visibility for so people. So they're going to go up. Then they're not going to come. Um, so George is going to remain a one-way street. Yes. So when they come out, they can either go up towards, I guess, the ER or come down George. Yes. Okay. Um, another question that I have. So that area, is it public still, or is it, will, will it continue to be um, hospital property? Because it was, it was designated as a public open space originally. I don't know, is it still public? The, the, the area is still shown for public open space, yes. All right, um, it's can, just, can you just define that, what you mean by public? That means that everyone can use that space? Uh, Yes, that's part of the redevelopment code yeah, ordinance. Okay. Um, There's nothing that defines that area that's being proposed in our plans, however. It doesn't say open space with signage. Okay, because my, my, my concern, as always, is the employees of the hospital congregating in the area and smoking. And it's like, as um, you know, uh, a neighbor, who do I contact if I have an issue? Do I contact the hospital security or do I call the Montclair police? It's still hospital it, property, correct? Yes. So, and the hospital has a 
no smoking policy on all of their property, correct? That's correct. So it sounds like you would contact the hospital, right? Okay, so that area will continue to be a non-smoking area. Oh, yes. Yes, it will be. Okay. But there would be no benches, right? Correct. <laughs> Thank correct. You. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the public? Karma Lockman, I have another question. I'm concerned, obviously, about traffic flow in the area. So I was wondering, looking at um, <coughs> site layout plan B, on, on the bottom part of that plan, um, I, okay, let me start from the beginning. So to get to the parking deck, a visitor would go along Sherwood Street, right, collect a ticket, and then go into the parking deck. And it looks like they can get out the parking deck, and this was what was told to me last time, by going on that little exit on Bay Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my question is, is there going to be an attendant at that exit who will collect the fee? Because right now I believe that exit is closed. Yeah. How do you it's, get, it's, but I was in the parking deck and the only way I could get out was to kind of go through and go back to Sherwood Street. So there would need to, wouldn't there need to be an attendant at that um, exit there <coughs> to collect the money? So there's no change to the operation of the garage at that location under current conditions to the proposed conditions. Okay, so if it's open. But... John, John, I can't, well, can't well, well, hear I can't you. have people talking from the... So employees can come out that way, and there, is, there, there isn't a gate. It's, there is a gate. So there's, it's badge-coded, so you can come out the deck, and only employees can go that way. Is there a sign that say employee exit only? There is. Is there? You don't know. <laughs> So the answer is yes, there's a sign. Okay, I just want to make sure, because I'm concerned traffic yeah. flow, no, if you I could get other traffic going through other than using right. Claremont Avenue and Walnut Crescent. Yeah, in fairness to this witness, if there's a specific question about that level of detail about existing condition, we have John Fromhold with us who did testify at the last meeting. Maybe I think he might be in the best position to answer the sort of question that you Okay, have. it's just I thought that I drove by and it was closed off. That's all. Anyway. <coughs> Do your full name for the record. Spell your last name, please. Uh, John Fromholt, CEO of Mountainside. The employees that, that use the um, parking deck as well as our physicians that use the surface parking all have an ID badge, and the gate comes up when you badge out. So that's the exit that the employees and the doctors use. Other questions from the public? Anything else from the board? No, looks like we're good, Councillor. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, our next and last witness uh, is Jennifer Stoughton, who will address the revised signage package that's been submitted to the board, and we'll call that package uh, Exhibit A9. And Jennifer, as you go through and just refer to any of the slides in that package, just identify them please and by by title I didn't bring it, I didn't put it on my computer you don't you didn't bring it with you it was but I didn't bring it to the meeting everybody's hard copies we all have hard copies do you want it on a thumb drive Janice pardon me let me see if I can I have a thumb drive if you need one Laptop? Yeah, I don't have copies for the public. Okay.
Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know why I'm not getting to the internet from my computer here. You don't have a Wi-Fi selection. Huh? There's no Wi-Fi connection. There's no Wi-Fi, so... Thank you. Thank you. So, as I was saying, our, our next witness is Jennifer Stoughton, who put together the sign package for Philadelphia Sign, which has been handed out to everybody this evening. And by the way, that sign package is A8, not A9. So, Jennifer will present those plans as she goes through that, referring to each in the different slides that you refer to, just refer to them by the, the number on the plan. Because uh, you may not be referring to every single one. So, mm -hmm. could we have the witness sworn, please? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Kindly state your full name for the record. Spell your last name. Sure, Jennifer Stoughton, S T O U G H T O N. Your witness. Great, thank you very much. And keep your voices up with the fans starting to get a little harder to hear you. <laughs> Got it. Okay, yeah, these mics are very good. Th thank you for those. So could you please describe for the board the nature of your involvement in this project, uh, specifically, of course, with respect to signage? Uh, sure. We have um, a relationship with Brand Active. You had met Sonia Ricardez last month at the meeting. Um, Brand Active had been hired as the design firm on behalf of Hackensack Meridian. And Philadelphia Sign, my company, is the sign vendor that has been hired to fabricate, install, and manage the program. So uh, she had asked me to assist in the matters since we are fairly, fairly close. And uh, I have been with Philadelphia Sign for a number of years, and I'm familiar with packages such as this. Okay, and could you please proceed to describe for the board the nature of the sign package that's been presented with reference to these plans that I've called out as Exhibit A8. Sure. So um, the exterior signage needs to incorporate a number of design parameters to be effective. So we tried to identify those design standards that will achieve the required level of legibility and visibility. And the sign proposal has been created to reflect the building's design, streetscape, and environmental conditions. Approach site triangles and departure site triangles are taken into consideration with regards to placement, and these areas will be clear of obstructions that might block a driver's view of conflicting vehicles or pedestrians. The most important aspect of designing effective signage in the healthcare industry is to provide for its visibility and clarity to the intended viewer, with clearly visible signage at all entrances, well-placed directional signs, and legible designations, we can improve productivity and enhance the patient experience. So that means fewer missed or late appointments, less distraction among employees from visitors stopping to ask for directions, and ultimately a higher rate of visitor satisfaction. So our signage plan that Philadelphia Sign has proposed shows uniformity and consistency in the design for all sign types so that users can recognize signage as part of the greater mountainside campus. Consistent materials, font and colors, and overall appearance have uh, contribute to the cohesive sign package. And the proposed signage also complements the design of both the new medical office building and existing mountainside hospital. I do want to mention that all wayfinding signs meet both Montclair ordinance and the redevelopment plan with a common sense approach to wayfinding. In order to direct patients and visitors, wayfinding signage should work from the general to the specific. Standard DOT or Department of Transportation hospital trailblazers with indicating arrows will be added and or replaced. 
As vehicular traffic gets closer, non-illuminated directionals will guide visitors to the emergency department, medical office building, hospital main entrance, valet, and patient visitor parking. Once on site, the more specific language and signage will direct the patients and visitors to their final destination with regard to parking and safety. The um, size and overall height of all the wayfinding signage meets code, Montclair. The vehicular wayfinding signs are placed along streets within the hospital campus, placed perpendicular to the road, and face oncoming traffic. Placement and height maximize vis visibility, but no sign exceeds eight feet and secondary directional signs are permitted at driveway entrances within a parking area to provide further guidance at decision points, and these do not exceed three feet in height as Montclair ordinance dictates. Uh, as you reviewed in the package, the new freestanding monument, N01, that can be seen on page, excuse me, sheet, sheet three complies with the Montclair ordinance for sign in commercial districts, as does the wall-mounted sign that we'll see later in the package. We're proposing a double-faced non-illuminated monument as only one such sign is permitted at the visitor entrance and stands perpendicular. In addition, the monument meets the five-foot setback from the closest property line. The base will be landscaped with ground cover vegetation that will not grow in height to obscure the sign. And as a Montclair ordinance requires, the monument contains only the official name of the building, the maximum sign area is less than 20 square feet, and the overall sign height is less than six feet. The wall sign now meets the criteria of the Montclair ordinance, as well as the tenants of the redevelopment plan. We're proposing a 30 inch high non-illuminated aluminum pan with vinyl copy and it's placed at the building facade to note the primary entrance and in view of major pedestrian walkways. So Philadelphia Sign would like to propose a comprehensive sign package which meets the form and function of effective healthcare signage. All decision points, visibility, consistency, and patient experience have all been considered and cared for. And most importantly, the signs proposed meet Montclair ordinance as well as the design strategy and vision of the redevelopment plan. All while serving the needs of the hospital, medical office building, and both Montclair and Glen Ridge communities. So okay. could you please provide us with a little bit of an sure. overview of the sign package that has been put together and presented sure. to the board? Sure. Can you hear me? Can I switch to this mic? Is that mic working? Yeah. Hello? Yep. Great. These do pick up well. <laughs> okay. So what we're proposing here is the um, a non-illuminated monument. Okay, you need to be referring to the... Sheet. Slide numbers, sheet sure. number. This is sheet. You can see at the top it says sheet three of 23. Yep. So this is sheet three of 23. It's a double-faced monument with vinyl copy. Uh, I refer to it as non-illuminated, but it will have external illumination. It's a three foot nine overall height, six foot and seven eighths inch overall length. The monument area above the reveal is 19 square feet and it will be placed at five foot with a setback from the property line. Copy is to the right, Mountainside Medical Office Building. Um, yeah, I just wanted, before you go on to your next slide, I want to ask you something. Yes, um, of course. Am I understanding this correctly that the street address, the letters for the street address are two and one eighth? That is correct. Um, and is the street address for the office building also One Bay Avenue? Because that's the address that's listed for the hospital building on the other side mm -hmm. when you Google it. Mm -hmm. So, and somebody, you know, all of us won't have a problem. <laughs> but people coming in from out of town, sure. they're trying to find this building. We have all this nice landscaping, and it's above street level on Bay Street, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a sign on the building, but the sign on the building isn't that big. It doesn't have a street address mm -hmm. on it. You have signs, as far as I can tell from the plan, you have monument signs that say um, medical office building this way, mm -hmm. but the 
driveway entrance is in an intersection, a, a traffic signal intersection, so your attention is, is going to be somewhat diverted because you have to observe traffic and, and the signal, and you have that one sign with two inch letters that says one there. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think I'd like to respond to that. First of all, I think you are correct regarding this, the street number that is commonly used address for the hospital. So we'll, we'll change that number uh, for the medical office building, uh, number one. And uh, secondly, with respect to the, the size of the lettering, uh, we're obviously we're flexible on that. Sure. And, you know, throughout, this is a fairly detailed package. I don't think the board is going to, you know, want a detailed presentation on 23 sheets. Mm -hmm. But I can certainly stipulate to you that uh, the, if the final package before it's installed would be subject to final review uh, by the board's professionals uh, so that uh, everybody should be comfortable. That said, obviously we want to give the board a good feeling about the signage and make a thorough presentation about it. But please you know, note that there's no problem at all with our agreeing to have there's no problem at all with any condition that would require that the sure. f final plan be subject to the review of and approval of the board's professionals. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to make sure that it's that I think that's one of the key signs. Yes. On the on the premises. And Agreed. I just want to make sure that if people can find it, um, you know, who don't know where it is, um, you know, the hospital is pretty obvious where the emergency room is pretty obvious, you know, as you're coming in. But if you're, you're looking for the office building, there are other office buildings that are adjacent to this. So, you know, if a, a good sign with, with good lettering that's visible from all directions, I think is key. And, it, and I, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm really happy about the way that you put the revised plan. It's very clear where they are. And this is my really only issue uh, or concern. It's not really an issue, but sure. my concern is because I really couldn't tell with the way, with the positioning where the arrow is and with the way that the vegetation is shown around it to make sure that it's visible as you're coming from all directions mm -hmm. so that you can find it and make that turn into the driveway yes. you know, yep. without um, you know, having any incidents. So. Understood. Yes, thank you. We, we did think, uh, and when my company reviewed Brand Active's initial um, sign package that had some errors of omission, we felt that a single-faced freestanding monument for the medical office building um, to let visitors know and patients alike that they have arrived is very important to the, the patient experience. Uh, are there any questions on sheet three of 23 before moving on? Further to the uh, point that he raised, yes. normally the convention would be that on one side of the street, if that's one, which is the hospital proper, the other side of the street would be an even number, maybe yeah. two. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Yes. I think exact copy of the sign would need to be flushed out with the hospital. I think we were just really looking for the... Um, local ordinance of Montclair and the planning board's mm -hmm. understanding of right. um, overall size, illumination or non-illuminated, and with respect to place. I got it, but we found something that we need to deal with. It was <laughs> accidental. It's nothing to do with you. No, I, I appreciate the input. Let me just say this. Sure. The new medical office building is to be assigned a new street address, which will be other than One Bay Avenue. So they'll, they'll have to figure it out mm -hmm. with the post office. Yeah. Sure you, you let us know. Nursing school had to have an address. <laughs> Probably. It's like 381. I, I was just hoping for a point of clarification. Um, you keep saying Montclair's ordinance in terms of the signage. Is there is or is there no Glen Ridge ordinance in terms? It's of a redevelopment plan. It's so it was it was inclusive of Montclair's uh, ordinance had the more specific language with regards to the freestanding sign, and then the sign package is inclusive of both the redevelopment plan and that ordinance, so that we could meet really form and function with the aesthetics and ordinance as well. So is this have to go to any of our, prof you, you kind of make reference to professionals. I don't know whether it's Montclair and Glen Ridge professionals. We utilize yes. the code. That's part of so, it. Yeah, is there any and, HPC issues? And to any? clarify on the reference to ordinances, because in fairness to Ms. Stoughton, she's obviously not, not an attorney. The, <laughs> the redevelopment, lucky for her, the, uh, <laughs> the redevelopment plan at section 10.0 
at SEC has a multitude of sections and pages dealing with signage, including wayfinding signage and building signage, uh, et cetera. So we comply, that, go, that governs, this, and that redevelopment plan was, of course, developed in consultation with both Glen Ridge and Montclair's consultants and adopted by both governing bodies. Uh, so uh, all the details are in there, and I'm sure, Ms. Stone, you're confirming that what you've done complies with the redevelopment plan, correct? It does. It meets the tenants of, of all. Okay. Thank that you. That would have been a better way to say it, okay. that it complies with the redevelopment plan. Th that's what I, I was confused about. There shouldn't be any intention that one town's favorite over the other. It's not like that. <laughs> but I will say, in fairness to Ms. Stoughton, the redevelopment plan, for instance, does say that wall-mounted signs will comply with the Montclair Ordinance for Signs in Commercial Districts. So that's what the Glen Ridge governing body adopted that language as well. So there was some reference in there to Montclair Ordinances. But bottom line, we comply with the redevelopment plan adopted by both governing bodies. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Okay. So proceed, please. Okay. Any other questions before I leave slide three of 23? Okay. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, moving uh, on to the slide down there. You're okay, you're on 423. So this is four. Um, this is four, slide four. It is NO2, a single-face, non-illuminated, monolithic directional. Monolithic just refers to the shape. Um, this is a new sign that we are placing um, at the, um, that would be the eastern corner of the new medical office building. And as it indicates, it's a single-faced sign, not illuminated, indicates emergency, main entrance, parking, and the medical okay. office. Will that be externally illuminated? Uh, it is not. No, it's not. Not illuminated at all. Thank you. Now, with the placement of that sign, there's a six-foot fence proposal there. <laughs> yeah. That is correct. When, um, when I had initially um, prepared, when Philadelphia Sign had prepared the sign package, we did not have all the information from Bowler. So um, as Alan had stated, the site plan and the sign plan, the, the sign, sign plan will comport with the site plan, and all those changes will be inclusive. So Brad Bowler, for the record again, uh, I had mentioned in my testimony that that, that fence stopped about 10 feet from the right-of-way line, so that allows for a five-foot setback and then this five-foot sign. So you'd actually see the sign. The fence would stop before the right-of-way line. So can, you, just, can you show us the pointer where exactly this is going to be on the property? Mm -hmm. It's going to be facing the neighbor then? <laughs> on the other side of the fence? It is... Yeah, and how far away is it from the property time. line? And like he's he's going to want to landscape the fence. Yeah. So. N O two is as I'm indicating on sheet four on the corner of the property of the medical office building, heading uh, towards west on Bay Avenue. Right. So is that going to be on the east side or the west side of the fence? <laughs> I think Brad Bowler could better address uh, that. <laughs> no, I Brad Bowler, for the record again, um, it will be on the west side of the fence, and we can agree to slide it approximately 20 feet to the west further from their neighbor. So is it going to be more in the area where the E1 sign is, where they show the removal? I'm sorry, I, I, there's a little background there. Could you say that again? So if there's a sign marked E1 that's shown for removal, is it going to be in that area? I you think they should put it over here, the west? in that little green area. You're referring to the existing directional. That, I believe yeah. that is further um, west on Bay Avenue. Right. Where they could move it west. No, from this current position. So the, I think you had asked if it would be along the fence line. It, in, in this proposal, it's approximately along our property line share with the neighbor. We would, we would push the proposed location about 20 feet to the west of where it's currently shown in this exhibit. Okay. Thank you. Wouldn't it be easier to see the location of these fence, these signs on the site plan so we can understand its relationship to the property lines and the and the landscaping? Well, the, the final site plans will show that, but the, the, I site, can't the sign package this. that's been submitted, for instance, go to sheet one if you could, please. Please give me two signs. 
The sign package that's been submitted right. does show the location but of I can't say I of, can't. of all of the signs. I mean, there's a, a lot of detail there regarding, but, and then each of those numbers keys into a sheet that provides you with more detail. What, I, what it doesn't show me is the 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 dimensions of the, the the setback of the sign from the property line on each side and its relationship to the landscaping. I'm used to seeing the signage plan on the site plan so you can see it exactly where it's located and mm -hmm. the landscaping around it. Yeah, uh, understood. As I said, there is a there's an awful lot of quantity of signage here. And we're, we're not, we're, I've tried to make it clear from the outset that to the extent there, there needs to be any refinements uh, of location. Let me say this, not to, I apologize for interrupting, but I, I'm trying to be helpful. I think that there are one or two signs that are sensitive and you're going right to the first two that are okay. probably the most unique and the most sensitive. Right. We're concerned with the neighbor that's next to this, where this sign's going and that's totally beyond what we thought. I'm looking at Google Map where there's an existing sign now that's an identification. Is that is it going to be in the same location as the existing sign? I think it's sheet six. Yep. Thank you. There you go. At least we can visualize. Yes, so we can. We can put it in the same location as that existing sign depicted for removal um, on sheet six. Chairman, is that good? Yes. Okay. Okay. Should I go back? Are there um, so NO two in summary is a single face, non illuminated directional. Uh, it will be located. Um, it's going to replace what replacing we just saw. the existing remove only. That is correct. I would advance. That's a little later. Okay. Uh, no three is again a single face non illuminated monolith directional that was placed in the rear corner of the medical lot. That would be the um, northwest lot uh, corner of the lot, and that was for oncoming traffic. Um, for Walnut mm -hmm. and Walnut Crescent. That indicates emergency, main entrance, parking, and medical office buildings. Okay, and that's on sheet four. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Five. Pardon me? That's sheet, five. sheet five, excuse me, yes, sheet five. Any questions on sheet five? Is that replacing an existing sign as well? That is a new sign. Okay. okay. Uh, moving on to sheet six, as we mentioned earlier, just circling back, that's an EO1, that's an existing sign, and that's removal only. NO4 is a new sign. It's a single-faced, non-illuminated post and panel. I am on sheet seven. This indicates the hospital entrance and the medical office building. And this is intended as um, pedestrian and it was requested at an earlier meeting. It can also be um, informative and visible for vehicular traffic as well. I have a question about this sign. Yes. Is this in the public right of way? It is not. Because it looks like it is on your detail. No, um, it, it, it's stipulated that none of them will be in the public right of way. So if, you know, the, from the level, from the scale, it may not be perfectly clear, but uh, there will be a final package with all the sign. It was indicated earlier to be as one of the conditions, if approved, would be that final overall comprehensive site plans have to be submitted, which will include right. all of the sign locations and will show them out of the public right of way. Because my other question is, how does isn't there a wall along the property line here, and how this relates to that wall? 
how there's, it would be installed on the outside? I don't know because no, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm there's a wall talking. here. Yep. And I don't know where this sign is. Okay, is yes. Um, I think Brad, Brad Bowler can respond to that. So it'll be mount, the, the wall's approximately a foot and a half to two feet high. So this sign will have to be raised up slightly higher than that so the bottom clears the wall. So, so it'll be behind the wall? Or? Yes. Okay. The wall's at the property line in the right of way. So our property line essentially runs on the back side of the wall. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions on sheet seven? Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Okay. That's okay. Uh, Mark done some of these sheets branded and unbranded, right? right? So on sheet seven, which is branded, it has the blue circle and the names, name of the hospital spelled out. Then on page five, um, it also it says unbranded, but there's that little circle. So that's. Yes. Is that so? What, well, what's your definition of branded and unbranded? I know. It's kind of semantics. On the unbranded, there is no mention of Hackensack Meridian. They have that kind of ghosting image of their burst of the logo okay. so that um, it kind of recalls to mind that brand without yes. being so um, overt. But it is not branded in the sense that it doesn't have copy that says Hackensack I see. Meridian. Okay. So, the, but the medical office building, is that not part of the Hackensack family? Of um, that is not all? my But there's no branding on that at all. It's pretty generic. Well, so. I can tell you that um, I was provided direction um, by all parties involved to include only Mountainside Medical Office Building at this phase. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it should not include the Hackensack Meridian copy as the other, some of the other branded directionals do. Again, right. just so that we could unify that sign plan and package as a kind of a campus proposal. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Anything else? Okay. Um, so moving on. Uh, and was, excuse me. Uh, just to keep it since, oh, sure. since that came up. Yes. Is that due to uh, legal, a legal split in ownership? And how does that play out in terms of uh, liability or uh, enforcement for the plan? Because this is coming up as part of the one entity, mm -hmm. but yet the building doesn't seem to have an official linkage to the hospital. Just yeah, I, I can respond to that. Yeah. Sure. As you know, the the applicant, as I indicated at the beginning of the proceedings, we actually have two applicants before you. One, Bay Urban Renewal LLC for the medical office building and the hospital with respect to the parking improvements uh, and expansion of parking facilities on the hospital's property. So the medical office building undoubtedly will include area leased to the hospital, include doctors whose practice is is based in no small part in the hospital, but it's not slated to be owned by the hospital. Um, so, and clearly that's consistent with the application having been filed with uh, two separate entities before you. So if there's a breach of the redevelopment plan or a breach of the uh, plan for construction, um, Will each entity, will the rights and responsibilities of each entity be spelled out very specifically? Who has what? Yeah, absolutely. Because there will be, as we indicated earlier, redevelopment agreements. It will have to be executed here. And we'll very clearly lay out the responsibilities of each of the parties uh, with respect to the proposed development very clearly. So if, if you could proceed. Sure. So uh, moving on to sheets, uh, let's see, I should be on sheet seven. Uh, NO4 we just discussed, and I'm moving on to sheet eight, which is NO5. This is more an informational, it's a single face, non-illuminated post and panel. Um, it's kind of like a parking rules plaque as you enter the uh, parking lot. Copy is specified to the right. It's really for informational purposes um, at last month's meeting or in comments, I believe the towing information was requested to be added. So we've incorporated that and kind of changed the layout to make the um, message a little more clear. 
And 06 is also a single face non-illuminated post and panel. This is uh, inside the parking lot interior and it's to direct traffic to both the main entrance and valet. Again, three feet overall height meeting the requirements of the redevelopment plan. N07 is a double-faced, non-illuminated monolith directional. Again, it's unbranded. Um, this is to indicate the emergency valet lot and as requested the handicap parking and push button for entry. N08 is a double-faced... Oh, sure, that I'm sorry. Was on sheet 10, yes, correct? I apologize. Uh, Thank any you. questions on sheet 10? Sorry, I'm picking up speed here. <laughs> uh, moving on to sheet 11. It's a N08 double-faced, non-illuminated monolith directional. Again, uh, this is towards the valet lot on, um, uh, that's, uh, let's see. That. And that's across from the emergency department and the new valet lot. So you have emergency indicated at the red band white copy as is standard emergency valet lot indicated to the left and again the handicapped parking. Signed copy for both sides A and B are clearly visible. Any questions on 11 before moving on? Sheet 12 is a standard DOT, I'm sorry, Department of Transportation sign. That's N09 and N10? That is correct. And N09 is just reserved handicap. And then N10 is specifically for those van accessible with penalty of law um, plaque underneath. N09 has quantity 10, as Bowler's plans have indicated, and N10 has quantity of 3. Moving on to sheet 13, if that meets with everyone's approval. And 11 is just a standard, again, Department of Transportation, standard uh, stop sign in, within the valet lot, regulate traffic. Moving on to sheet 14 is an N12 single phase regulatory compact cars only. Um, and again, the sign plan will comport with um, Bowler's, um, Bowler Engineering's site plans. So the quantity of the compact cars will be indicated and specified um, with the final redevelopment plan. Moving on to sheet 15, N13, a single face regulatory parking sign in the medical office building lot. N14 is again handicapped with van accessible parking. All of the uh, parking signs are also installed in a typical bollard as requested. Moving on to sheet 15, additional Department of Transportation, handicap van accessible parking signs. That was sheet 16. That was sheet 16. Sheet 17 are the stop and do not enter signs as shown in the medical office building with sign placement and quantity detailed. Moving on to sheet 18. This is a single-faced regulatory staff parking sign. Sign will be uh, installed on the light poles that Bowler's plans have indicated. Poles will have two signs, one on each side, and that's just to specify staff parking. And then again, N20 on sheet 18 indicates compact cars only. Uh, and now we're getting into the detail of uh, sheet 19 indicates N21, no parking loading sign, and again, the regulatory parking for staff and patients only with towing information. Copy is specified to the right. Moving on to sheet 20, that's an electric vehicle parking only while charging. That's a takeoff from Bowler's sign plan, as indicated on the full plans. Um, N24 is the first surface, which means it's applied to the exterior or the outside of the glass. And there are a quantity of three proposed. This is on sheet 21. And it has the 10 inch high band for Hackensack Meridian Health Mountainside Medical Center. And then the um, standard no weapons, no smoking, and video surveillance in use copy for safety and compliance. Excuse me. Yes. So just to clarify, there will be access from all three points for individuals coming in for appointments, correct? That is my understanding. 
Um, is it possible to indicate on the glass or some way that there's patient access at these doors? I imagine that, well, I won't make a comment. Is it possible to? Yes, we can. If it meets with the board's approval, absolutely. We can include that in, in vinyl copy. It's just additional um, application. Any other questions with regard to the vinyl on the doors? Yes. This N25, is that going to be on all three sides? Um, am, am I okay to move on? I was just making sure nobody had questions on N24. My, oh, sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. I, I'll move on if everybody's in right. agreement. Did you mean N24 or N... N25. Okay, so, so why don't we go sure. up to N25. Okay. Um, happy to move on. So N25, um, this is the uh, primary building sign. It's a non-illuminated pan sign, which is, as I mentioned in my introduction, it's aluminum with vinyl copy. It's a bent pan. There will be an LED light bar installed above the sign that will match uh, the aesthetics of the building. And um, the copy area, as again, it's Mountainside Medical Office Building. It's two foot six high overall height on sheet 22 and the overall length of nine feet. Um, I know I was in uh, only the last meeting to your question, and I know that that was brought up that perhaps uh, a sign should be added to each of the three elevations where the entrance. Um, and I believe um, that the proposed sign is placed only over the primary entrance. fine with it. I just didn't know if there was any reason that you wouldn't do all three sides because everyone was saying it was supposed to be supposed to look the same from each side. So gotcha. that was why I asked the question. Yep. Understood. I do recall that comment. Um, so it does indicate the primary entrance um, and uh, as I mentioned it's not illuminated. The night detail just, just shows the halo illumination with the LED light bar over top. Yeah, and in fact the uh, the redevelopment plan does provide that signage should be positioned on the building facade at the primary entrance in a view of major pedestrian uh, walkways. Uh, so it's kind of typical for ordinances not to, you know, to try to control the number of wall-mounted signs. that answer your question? Yeah, I said, no, I said I'm fine with it. I just okay. didn't know if there was any sort of reason as to why there was not the other two signs. That's fine. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, leaving page 22, if that's okay. Uh, moving on to page 23. Um, a couple of the reviews from uh, other parties had mentioned that there was a, a, a real need to either add to uh, existing intersections or even replace so um, at the request and the suggestion, we followed the Claremont Ave and Grove Street, Ridgewood Ave and Bay Ave, Baldwin Street and Highland Ave, Baldwin Street and Highland Ave, and Bloomfield and Highland. And again, that's really um, to direct traffic from the very general down to the specific so that once you're on site, you're able to uh, safely um, direct traffic and uh, vehicular um, traffic can follow from a greater distance. Okay. Some do the existing, I noticed some of the existing uh, mountainside, the language is kind of different, but we are going to propose that we standardize the language and just use the typical DOTH with no indication of the hospital as you're going from the broad and the arrows to indicate path of travel. Okay. Um, and I believe that is 23 of 23. Are there any questions on the trailblazers before I include? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, Montclair has an ordinance. I don't know if Glen Ridge has it, and I don't know where this would fall out. That's not necessary, and it would entail a sign. Okay. We have an or a no idling ordinance, a no idling specifically around public buildings. The signs are all around our schools. Mm -hmm. um, we have seven schools, actually 11 schools. Um, I don't know if that would fall under this, of the no idling for three minutes around the building. You can always suggest it. I'm sorry? It, it, if if the, the, the two boards want to see that, 
You can always suggest it. Yeah. Well, we have that. <laughs> sure. Um, yes. Boston Leverage. Uh, is it really necessary to have three signs on one corner of a residential area in the Bay Area? Um, that was our recommendation based, as I said, on previous did you comments. Know that sucked, where that is? We did, it's but. Yeah, but obviously you're much more familiar with the area than I. Um, we would follow the board's recommendation. We can certainly eliminate or add as needed. I don't think I'd want those three sides of my Noted. <laughs> okay. And which ones and which, you're, you're referring to? What specifically? Uh, N26, N27, N28. Okay. All on the same cross street. Okay, understood. Okay. Of, okay, right. so Bay yeah. and Ridgewood, so... Um, pointing to the upper right hand on 23 of 23 up here. Okay, okay so you're yes. suggesting the elimination of those three at that location. Mm -hmm. You don't want all three, right? Just one side. Yeah. Would you want one or two? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't want all three of them. So. Okay. Well, maybe the well, best way to handle that would be along the lines I suggested a few minutes ago as just part of the general of evaluation of the details here by the board's professionals. So we certainly have no ax to grind on that. If it's, if it's zero, one, or two, that's, that's fine as well. Yeah, un understood. And you heard from Ms. Stoughton that we're fine doing whatever you think is, whatever the boards think is best in that regard. Councilor Schlager made uh, suggested it kind of got passed over and that was yeah. Uh, with, uh, the, the, uh, we we can do that. Sorry. We can do that. Right. I mean, may I suggest that we have uh, potentially two at the uh, back side of the hospital, potentially three, uh, given the size of the drop off on Bay Street, and then one or two at the um, at the new building, depending on the entrance. Sure. That's fine. At at, uh, at logical locations for. Best site. So that's a, just to be clear, the rear of the hospital indicated uh, on the MOB property, and where else? The rear of the hospital has a, you know, a C drop off and right. probably two signs would accommodate that, given that cars pull up there and sit, sometimes wait. Uh, the front of the hospital has a couple of different uh, drop off. Rows and so probably three signs would be needed in that area, um, and uh, the new building one or two depending on uh, the layout. Sure, no problem. So, excuse me. Wait, sure. Regards to sheet eight, I see on the sign there. Post sign. It says parking for medical office building staff and patients only. Yes. In prior testimony, we had heard that individuals may be parking in this location and then going over to the hospital. I was wondering if we might rephrase that, or was it the intent that we would indicate to folks only if you're going to the medical office building should you be parking here? Can you, what was the initial, you, did you propose an alternate language and I missed that? No, so this is prior testimony that you did not give, so it okay. may take someone else speaking okay. for this piece. Gotcha. But the wording on this sign on sheet eight says, yes, yes as you can see here, parking okay. for medical office building only. And we heard prior testimony that some individuals may be able to park here and then access the hospital um, by intent given the parking that needed to be provided for this plan. So, oh, I, I got it. I remember. Yes. What we're talking about is, uh, we're talking about late night, people who don't pick up their key, the valet. So it may be, it's really people that are parking in this lot and then going to the hospital. Right. Yeah, but the, I, the idea is that people parking in the medical office building lot should really be patronizing the medical office building, not, not the hospital. Um, so I think that we, I don't think it was intended to convey that there could be some parking on the medical office building lot for, for the hospital property. I, I think his comment is that right. say patients only, they think I'm a hospital patient. 
flip the wording and say, yeah. oh, oh, okay. Off as patients and building staff, you might solve the problem. And yes. It's in, e it's in yes. either direction. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure the sign's okay. consistent with the intent. Yes, the okay. that's a good. So, that's a yes, good point. That's a great suggestion. So to yes. your point, what we're trying to do is convey the positive message rather than say excluding hospital staff right. and, and patients. We're trying to be more specific and inclusive. So you're right. If we um, make that switch, then it'll modify the. Mm -hmm. And it's just the second section that then where it says all unauthorized vehicles will be towed at owner's expense could lead to people feeling like this is an exclusive designation, not... Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I don't understand. If someone parks there in the middle of the afternoon and walks over to the hospital, is their car subject to any I believe that. I, I would have to defer to those more involved with the project in, at, a, at an earlier date, but that was my understanding. That's the intent. Yeah, John? can't see any reason somebody would want to do that. Um, if it becomes an issue, then we'll have security take a look at it. But we have valet at the Harry's entrance for all the outpatients, the day surgery. We have valet at the ED, and we have valet at the main entrance, and it's all free. So somebody choosing to park over there, um, if it becomes an issue, we'll just have to enforce it with security. I don't I suspect it will be an issue. This morning is that yeah. They would be they subject, would be subject to be, ultimately they could be subject to being towed, yes. In fact, I think we, we testified last meeting that the valet people are also on premises and can kind of help in enforcement of that and let people know that that parking is reserved for the medical office building. Remember, your redevelopment plan has very strict parking requirements for a medical office building at five spaces per thousand, and we're complying with that, and we're not double counting. We're not counting the medical office building spaces to be used for the hospital, and we're not counting the hospital spaces to be used for the medical office building. So I think it's consistent with the redevelopment plan to have it set up the way we have. Uh, we all know in the real world somebody parks there one time and walks over to the hospital and not necessarily going to end up being towed. But on the one hand, on the other hand, yes, you should not be parking in the medical office building lot if you're not a patient or employee at the medical office building. And did, so it will include visitors as well? Yeah, absolutely. Company. Yeah, patients and employees and visitors for the medical office building can right. certainly park on the MOB lot. So then going to sheet one, I believe it is, just around the vehicular wayfinding, I was trying to put myself on the streets, I'm coming in, and what do I actually see? So if you come in, I believe it's N05, which we just discussed, not a wayfinding sign, just designating whether you should be there or not. And then N06 tells you to the right, sorry, we're flipping here, but 06 is on sheet, sheet nine, indicates to you that the main entrance is to the right, as well as valley parking. That is correct. Yes, so when you see that sign, I know this is a bit involved, but when you see that sign based on the fact that the main entrance sign is inset to the building, as we indicated should be on the facade, the large sign, Yes. I don't believe you will see that sign coming around that corner. So let's say you proceed past N06 and you go into the parking lot to the right just under the office building. What indication would the individual have where they should go for the main entrance? Well, um, yeah. I, if I'm following, that's a good point. If I'm following you correctly, you're going to have the N01, which is the freestanding monument indicating the building itself. Right. And then as you enter the parking lot, you will, that N06 is your first sign visible. And right. that's exactly what will indicate the traffic path. Um, the main entrance and the valet is to the, is to the right, and that's for the patients and visitors. And I may have missed a sign, but let's say you take a right there and <coughs> down into the parking lot. Mm -hmm. What sign do you then see that indicates to you either the main entrance or valet that you're looking for? Yeah, what, yeah one, one point two. Remember, with the spec, as, a, as was presented on the new architectural plans, there also be a canopy, the driveway. So that will certainly help signify 
the main entrance to any vehicle entering the, the property. And, and I believe to your point that um, in, again, the only meeting I had attended was the last one, but the decision was made from the um, valet parking specialist that they would use a temporary uh, kind of sandwich board that would meet with material and, and you know form and function, but it would be something that could be removed at the end of the night, and they would place it at the entrance of the driveway, um, and that would be basically catching that vehicular traffic that's already number one seeing that you're in the correct place, you're not going to be towed, you're, you're parking in the correct parking lot, and then you've already directed the people to the main entrance of the valet, and then that kind of temporary what we call sandwich board, which is like an A-frame temporary sign on a sidewalk, would indicate for them to enter at the valet entrance under the portico share or canopy. Yes, so the, I didn't want to add character, I, I don't think we want to add characters to the main sign because the two solutions I was thinking of is you could have in parentheses main entrance underneath that sign so they understand that is the main entrance. To the monument? Which I'm not suggesting gotcha. but it is an option. Okay. Just want to follow. The, yes, the other one is to the I'm not sure if I have the direction here, but let's say the lower right corner of the building, just in the lot, if there could be just a little bit, yes, right there and okay. a little to the left, if there could be a sign that just indicates main entrance or, I don't know if we want to indicate valet parking per se, because it's only part time, mm -hmm. but just some way, because I could see many people coming in and doing a bit of a loop around the building. Mm -hmm. And even if they do see valet, no, I need to get to the main entrance. And I just, there's also not, you know, there could be people walking through the parking lot as there's not, you know, sidewalks around the parking lot. So, okay. and then they're looking to the left, not seeing main entrance, they're continuing to drive. It just was a concern. And we have plenty of signs, but if we could just have one more there, I think it would be helpful for people navigating the parking lot. Okay. Um, and so would that sign then indicate just the main entrance? I think main entrance is fine. Okay. We'll have the temporary signs for the for valet. The valet. Okay. Are you going to be providing the A-frame sign for the valet or will the valet be providing the sign? <coughs> I would have to defer. I believe the valet group is going to be providing that as it's kind of specific to their craft. Yeah. Is it appropriate to come in and have a sign that says self parking? Because I'm coming in, I see the main entrance, I see a valet. If I want to park my own car, where do I go? Is that going to be obvious? Uh, I think. I always go valet, but for right. the <laughs> It's free. <laughs> um, sure, I think we can take that under advisement and at the right. request of the board, sure. Yeah, um, I think that's a good point because if, obviously it's not 100% valet. And some people would prefer not to deal with the valet even if it's free. So we can include a reference to self-parking. Yeah, that's a good point. I just have a general question about the whole signage plan. Because we're not seeing the signage on the hospital side. We're just seeing the new signage for the office building. And uh, no. I, I don't know if that's within, you know, for us to really understand. Because when I see the, the first signs at um, the right page number here, yeah. like on sheet four, yeah. you're saying main entrance, but you mean main hospital entrance. You don't mean entrance to, because then it says medical office building. Can, um, when you are you referring to sheet four specifically with your question, or do well, you initially? And the reason why I'm just asking for clarification, I had initially my brain tuned into the building sign, but I think you're referring to some of that directional sign uh, coming up on on right. Because we call it, when we say main entrance on the directional signs, we mean we mean main entrance to the hospital. That is correct. But then when I guess. There's other signs that say main entrance, and it means to the office building. Yes, and the re. Go ahead. You're already in the lot. Yeah, because you're already. It's, it's really that's what. 
you're hired. <laughs> what I was right. going to say was from general to specific. That's exactly right. Once you're already in the lot and you've indicated that you're at the right place, you're correct where you should be, you're parking uh, in the correct lot. Um, I, I think by this gentleman's comments, he meant main entrance as in where I'm going to enter the building. Right. So I just don't know by not knowing what other signs are already there for the hospital, you know, uh, this how these relate to those signs. Right. To my knowledge, this is inclusive of the entire sign proposal. Um, when you say there are other signs to the main entrance or medical office building, have you seen some other indication in previous submittals? No, I just I don't know if there's existing signage for the existing okay. hospital. Well, the remember this this application relates to the redevelopment area right. and this redevelopment project. So what, what we're depicting here, in fact, if you saw on the, on the cover sheet, uh, there's numerous signs referenced throughout you know, this new part of the campus on both the MOB parcel and on the hospital's expanded parking area. Uh, so the, uh, obviously, there could be other signage on the hospital outside of the okay. redevelopment area, but that's not part of this application. But I think it's fair to say that when you put together this sign, plan, that you took right. into account existing signage as well, is that correct? Yes. Now I'm, I'm following you, sorry. Um, I'm sorry? Oh, understood on the directional that we're looking at on sheet four. So, um, to clarify. Okay, so to answer your question, um, in initially, and again, it was kind of a, just a whisper of a sign proposal that you had, um, that Brand Active had proposed in the last meeting, it did include signs that were already on campus, and the decision as um, you had made was the decision was made to only propose the areas for redevelopment, but the existing signs at Mountainside Hospital that fall without, uh, outside of the redevelopment plan will also be addressed. And that language and all of the same kind of uh, tenets of wayfinding will be followed throughout, so there will be a consistent message. And we have already been contracted to do that. Okay, so that's what I wouldn't so understand. We will make I absolutely you know, sure that, that, yes, and that's very important that the language is consistent so that you don't lose your. And it's not overkill. I mean, yeah. I don't need, you know, one across the Correct. street and one on the other side yes. of the street. Correct. Yes, and, but you don't want to lose a person by changing the message. Right. Agreed. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Again, Joe Fishinger with NV5. Um, I have a number of technical comments, which I believe you've said you'd address. But can you explain the, the reasoning? I think it's sheet 10 um, with Signing the emergency valet lot, I'm a little confused as yes. to exactly what that is. And since it's the people driving to it are the valets, why is sure. why is it necessary to sign that lot since Understood. it's not for public <coughs> use? Okay, so that's a great question, and I did just receive. Um, I believe you are. Joe Fissinger, and yes. five. these are your comments, yes. Okay, so I did receive these this morning, and I apologize. Um, I did try to address them <coughs> in my own thoughts and comments. But uh, so you're referring to, let me just get to that sheet for the boards. So you're referring to N07, correct? Yes. And 07 is for everybody's edification on sheet 10. Um, so the idea here is that this is to indicate the emergency valet lot. Um, this whole area we felt does need to be identified so that visitors and, um, um, you know, basically visitors will not park in that area. Um, and we talked about having a positive message versus the negative message of the do not park and who can. 
Um, I think that because it's an emergency valet lot, it needs to be indicated, and we took into consideration the comments from the last meeting, that the hours needed to be stated, and then the handicapped parking had to be added as well. Um, I think that if you are, say, rushing into the ER and using the emergency valet, you would like to know to indicate to your loved ones or whomever comes to retrieve your belongings, I have no idea where my car went. It's somewhere in the emergency valet. So we did think, you know, in our estimation, it needed to be indicated somehow. Um, the verbiage can certainly be changed or um, discussed, but again, it does need to have some indication of what the function of that lot is to indicate its operational use. Do you think some other label other than emergency would be appropriate for that lot. For example, you could call it the flower lot or the purple lot. Uh, quite frankly, emergency to me means you're going to the emergency room. The la I would hope no one would want to drive into that lot thinking they were going to the, they had to park there for the emergency room. Sure. So I'm just asking if you can consider different language and different naming yes, convention. Yes, absolutely. We will take that Yeah, up. we definitely will consider that. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Part of that overall condition I alluded to. And then we'll just mark your your memo from 422.18 as a B8. Other questions from the public? Anything else from the board? Counselor, I think we're we're good with this witness. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. So that concludes uh, the presentation of our witnesses uh, in support of the application. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on the application? Counselor, it doesn't seem to be. Uh, Thank you. Do you want to make some closing remarks? Yes, I would appreciate the opportunity to do that. I will be brief. Uh, first, I definitely want to thank the board for going above and beyond the call, arranging meetings like the one we had tonight and prior to that last month, and for that matter, prior to that, the numerous meetings that we had with your various professionals and putting together the redevelopment plan, uh, which provides, of course, the basis for this proposal that's before you tonight. Uh, I also would like to add that uh, I think, as you saw throughout the testimony, we have made every single effort, and I think successfully so, in complying with uh, the letter and the spirit of the redevelopment plan. By the same token, we have also tried to be as flexible as we can to address various questions and comments and a few concerns that were raised by members of the public and members of both planning boards and your professionals. And I would hope that you agree that we succeeded in that respect in addressing those comments. And in, in no small part also, as I indicated earlier, in being prepared to abide by a condition that would make uh, a lot of the de ultimate details, such as those in the signage plan and the overall comprehensive site plan, subject to final review and approval and sign off by your professionals before issuance of, of a building permit. Uh, a lot of effort has gone into this plan. It's been a journey. Um, and uh, we hope that we're coming now to a, a very important and successful close to this chapter uh, of that journey. And I would respectfully ask uh, that the board, the boards, both Glenridge and Montclair, uh, see fit to approve the applications that were submitted both by One Bay Urban Renewal uh, LLC as well as by the hospital. All right, thank you, Councilor. Thank you.
I think the next stage that we have here is that uh, our respective boards will review this hearing and uh, at our next respective meetings um, and make our decisions. Um, uh, I'd ask the uh, planners for both boards as to what dates we would expect those to proceed on. Um. I have a, well, you want to have two separate resolutions or one resolution that's approved by both boards? How do we do it last? How do we do it last time? That seemed well, to work okay. Well, we didn't have a we didn't have a site plan. We just had the redevelopment. But we did have a we did have a resolution, though, right? Yeah, we had two separate resolutions on the redevelopment plan. I, just, I want to make sure our conditions are consistent. I think that's important. Yeah, maybe we could go through the conditions. Sure. I know, Glenn, uh, uh, you've got some really good notes. So. Is that okay? I'll, I'll sure. go. And then you, you know, let's, let's work them. Um, Glenn, you're listening also, right? Oh, you can absolutely. Help me out. Okay. One, the applicant represented that the roof AC units will be state of the art and will comply with the sound ordinance and will be screened so that it will not be seen from the street. Number two, the applicant must post sufficient escrow for the municipalities to hire a LEED accredited professional to review the plan submissions and construction drawings and monitor construction process to determine compliance with the lead proposals. For the purposes, purposes of this approval, the applicant represented that it can achieve a minimum of 50 points, which is the equivalent of silver level lead certification. And that's required by the redevelopment plan. Three, the applicant is to comply with the board's engineer and traffic letters. Four, deliveries and standards. I'm sorry, number three. Applicant is to comply with the board's engineer and traffic letters. And I'll email you this afterwards. So. Okay. It's more important you listen. Deliveries and sanitation pickup shall be limited to the following hours. I got a blank. Does anybody want to fill that in? No? Or do we care? Should I take that out? What's it? 7 a.m. to 9 p.m.? Does that sound reasonable? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. Okay, got it. The trees that are to be saved must be marked. Uh, it was represented that the hospital security will police the parking lot of the office building. Is that what we want that? Okay. Uh, it was this representation. The boards are desirous of Essex County taking responsibility for the signalization of the intersection at Bay Avenue. The signal is to be designed in accordance with Essex County standards and shall be powder coated. Eight, the applicant will be responsible to provide a crosswalk on Bay Avenue should the county determine that such a crosswalk, such a crossing is necessary near Sherman Avenue. Nine, the applicant is to add fencing along Bay Avenue to limit, it, to limit pedestrian crossings mid-block. The Glenridge HPC is to review and approve the look of the proposed fencing. At the moment, it's post and rail, but I'm not going to include that. Ten, do we want a condition regarding picking up cars after hours? There was some testimony that there was a whole procedure for that. I don't know if anybody feels it's necessary. No, I don't think so. Take it out? Yeah. Okay. Eleven, the applicant agreed that a construction, traffic, and staging plan are to be added to the redevelopment agreement in consultation with the police departments and the board's traffic expert. So that at the time of construction, we handle the parking properly, the circulation properly. 11, the applicant is required to submit a comprehensive site plan showing all commitments, promises, and changes agreed to throughout the process and confirming compliance with the redevelopment plan, which is to be reviewed and approved by the community's professional staffs I have prior to the issuance of a building. Is that okay? I, I would love to have it done prior to, prior to memorialization, but I don't think it's realistic. Okay, it'll never happen. 
All right, 12. The six parking spaces abutting 289 Bay Avenue are to be signed for use by employees only. 13. The new medical office building is to be assigned a new street address, but will be another address other than which will be other than another uh, other than one Bay Avenue. 14. No idling signs are to be added to the plan as it's suggested at the time of the hearing. I don't have the specific, I didn't pick up on the specific locations. Three at the main hospital entrance, two at the rear of the hospital, and uh, one or two at um, applicant's discretion at the entrance of the new building. That's what I have. The only other thing I would note is, just want to make sure that everyone's clear on this. I don't have any clue what the new office building is going to be called from the, from what we heard tonight. So, just just so you're alert to that. In the, the um, you said engineer, and uh, there would be clients with engineer and traffic and traffic, um, and with respect to the. Um, Evaluation of the intersection at Walnut <coughs> Walnut Crescent was that part of the um, was that part of uh, the traffic consultant's comments? Yes. I don't That's the uh, NB five uh, April twenty two report. And they agreed that they would would evaluate that. Okay. So is that okay? That's, that's good enough. Be, Just that's up to our traffic expert to make sure he. He stays on that on that bone. He's been pretty good about it so far. I think he will. That's all and I have. What about the um, what about the final signs that we've just gone through? We heard that there's going to be some tweaking of them. Um, I'm assuming, based on the testimony that we heard, that they're going to have to our staff's going to have to look at the transcript and. Make sure that it comes up on the plan the same way. Unless you want it, we got plenty of time. We can make it detailed. Um, I would just, you know, I'm just concerned again about visibility and legibility um, for drivers, um, and that there be, you know, adequate evaluation of the signage to make sure um, that they're both visible and legible, uh, you know, for the purposes that they're designed. For. Um, and but shall we? Who will make that evaluation, Mr. Fishinger? You're on our team, right? Yes. Come on up. It's, I think he, we should have his assistance. I'm sorry. You may have to say it again, Mr. Chairman. We're talking about. We're just talking about you know all the wayfaring signs and, and um, monument signs and such that are identifying where the buildings are. And there are several of them that are really meant to be seen, um, you know, by uh, people in, in, not walking, but in traffic and driving their cars so that they know where to go. Um, and just making sure that those signs where they're, where they're actually going to be put up are both visible and in terms of, you know, unobstructed views and also legible in terms of the print on them, because some, it seemed on some of them it was, the lettering was kind of small, um, to make sure that, you know, it's legible for people driving so that they can read the sign, you know, uh, while they're driving, you know, uh, within enough time to make a turn if they have to. The, uh, the MUTCD, which is, you know, the Fed's guideline for signs, has guidelines for know how high a letter needs to be at a certain distance when you're driving we can check their plans against those recommendations to make sure that they the signs are large enough to read but not so large that they're obtrusive that sounds good sounds reasonable mm -hmm. anything else how do we handle things like uh, photo documenting the adjoining houses or the nearby houses during demolition? Like Mr. Bowler testified to that. Let's 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 cook it up. Tell me what you wanted to say. 
Uh, that the con I guess that the contractor will photo document the adjacent homes to ensure that houses are not damaged and remain clean. Will photo what document? Photo document. Prior to construction. Prior yes. To, prior to demolition. Prior to, prior to demolition. demolition. Correct. Yeah. Um, I mean that that's the sort of thing that can also go into uh, the redevelopment agreement. Well, we're going to include right. it here, and then we can find. All right. Let's get it done. That's simple. Let's get it done. Get sure. It and that it? also all plantings will be native species species and that the pyrus trees will be removed from the plans? What was the, what was the offending species? Pyrus. I believe it's a type of pear tree. P-Y-R-U-S? Yes. P-Y-R-U-S, yes. Okay, all plantings will be native species and the iris... Pyrus. Pyrus. Yeah, my, my pronunciations are bad. <laughs> are to be removed from the plan. Oh, okay. It's like the pirates. Was there? <laughs> you have the, uh, the uh, powder coated street light. I got that. Oh, did you? I sorry, I missed that one. Yeah, that's okay. That's what we're doing. We're putting it together. We'll have the uh, HPC. How about Glenridge HPC when they look at the fence, decide on the color? Of the uh, No, the uh, street light. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Now, the signals be designed in accordance with Essex County standards and shall be powder coated in consultation with the Glenbridge HPC. Now, are we just using a standard light uh, street traffic signal pole and it's colored, or is it a decorative pole that's colored? colored? If there's I something that the HPC would recommend that is um, suitable to meet Essex County standards, I would assume that that would be the best of both worlds. Okay. I agree. Is that okay with the applicant? Mr. Chairman, if I may real quick, um, Essex County got standards are typically standard aluminum poles powder coated black. Um, if you want, if they want some sort of decorative poles, that's going to have to be contingent on the county because they typically don't permit decorative poles like that. Right. And so, so if they don't permit it, then they don't permit it. Um, we can ask the question. All they can do is say yep. no. Thank right? You. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Did get it all? Yep. Anything on the uh, street furniture? Did we want anybody taking a look at that? The uh, was it some garbage cans and mm. benches? Mm. Like, do you want to go with the? You want to have HPC take a look at that? Okay. Yeah. Fine with that. Since they're, making, since yeah. they're making the, okay, they're, they're making some of the aesthetic decisions. Yeah. Let them, mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Let them yeah. opine on that. I'm um, yeah. <laughs> They're not here to object. I have the garbage cans and street uh, and st not street trees. <laughs> Garbage trees and benches are to be reviewed by the HPC. Glenn, I got to take you back to this. Who's paying for the Who's paying for the traffic light? A developer is. Okay. Thank you. So we don't vote today. I guess not. We don't vote today. What's it? I think I don't see why not. I mean, uh, I didn't. I had no. My feeling was I didn't think we'd get through everything tonight, and I think that I was thinking that you would have time to reflect on this, and we'd do the conditions. But we now have the conditions. We're all here. We may as well advance the project. I don't see I any mean, benefit. It, it looks like we are prepared. Are you guys prepared to proceed? If not, if so, we can. If so. Yeah, sure. Hey. Okay. All right, well, I guess we, we can do a joint resolution or a joint uh, motion at least. Well, I think what we should do is do two separate motions. We, I don't know who's going to go first. And this is one of those projects that is reflective of the redevelopment plan. So I'd like you to put some, a positive comment or two on the record, but I don't think you need to put a whole lot on the record in this instance. <coughs> so do you want us to go first? Do you want to go first? I gave you a choice. 
Outlined by Mr. Galvin. Just, can I just ask a, a point first? Do we have to have a public hearing with Glenn Ridge about this first? We've never had, you know, I thought we had this represented to people. Ridge, right? This meeting is a continuation, but we are questioning do we need to have a separate planning board public hearing? This is a the, This would this be a planning board public hearing. Right, board. but nothing separate. I, I, yeah. No. So when we adopt the resolution, it would just be on our own, but it would be here. Right. And it was notice for Glen Ridge. It was. It was. It was. It, my, my question is, I I thought there was a, some discussion that action would be taken at a Glen Ridge meeting. So I don't know whether people from the public would have thought they would, would have another no, shot. The notice so. covered this meeting. <laughs> right. This is the public meeting now. The board. If the board feels that you need additional time or additional meeting to consider the application, that's really up to the board. But I think the applicant has presented everything. You have, you know, unless the board has questions for the applicant, right. or whether there's public that, you know, with all the conditions listed, haven't had it that aren't here, or that we no, could have been. been. They could have been here. Right, right. Public well, has been noticed. Right, and and I guess technically at this point the hearing is closed. Testimony is closed. Hearing is closed. Right. Uh, comments were asked for and as <laughs> such received such as they weren't. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to make sure we didn't a, say This is a public meeting of both boards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It just happens to be located in Montclair. We could have gone back and forth between both towns. And I think last time uh, when we were talking about the redevelopment plan, we had some issues that we wanted to discuss individually about, I guess, refining it and such. <coughs> we're, I guess we're beyond that now. We really, really don't have those kind of issues to consider separately. It's whether or not uh, we want to, um, you know, move this plan along. I think... So again, I, I would suggest that the board consider a resolution granting site plan approval in accordance with the plan submitted and subject to the conditions outlined by Mr. Galvin. We have a motion. I offer such a motion. I second that motion. And Mr. Dawson, you will not be voting, okay? Right. right. Just, it's not abstention. If you abstain, it counts as a vote. So just. Trust me on this. We're not voting. Okay, I'll just sit here. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Comments for the board? Questions? Me? Want call a vote? Okay, so this is a... Uh, we're, f we're fine. You want any more positive comment for the record? No, we're fine. I think you found the plan generally compliance with yeah. the redevelopment plan. Right. That's, that's That's, that'll work. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Fields? Yes. Hagerty? Aye. Council Person Morrow? Aye. Robert Morrow? Aye. Murphy? Yes. Tarano? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Chair? Aye. Motion carries. All right, it's tough. Right. And, um, I'll make a motion that uh, we um, approve uh, the application um, subject to uh, the conditions that have been recited on the record um, and um, finding that the plan is, as currently submitted um, meets the requirements of the redevelopment plan. We're satisfied that it does. I'll second that. Call the roll. Vice Chair Brodock? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Brandon? Yes. Councillor Schlager? Yes. Ms. Willis? 
Yes. Mr. Rooney? Yes. Mr. Gilmer? Yes. And Chair Wynn? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Carrie? Yes.